New figures from the research firm Associa suggest the cost of a basket of 15 popular mid-range grocery items, pasta, tin tomatoes, strawberry jam, it's up by 8% in just a year. The food writer and activist Jack Monroe with us. Hello, Jack. Hi, uh. Hi, Kate Hardcastle, consumer and business specialist at Insight with Passion. Hello, Kate. Hi there. Hi. So, Jack, what's going on? Like, are these things ever going to come down? Um, well, it's a two-part answer to that because uh, until very recently, I noticed the cost of the basics and value ranges at all of the big four supermarkets had either those products had either disappeared or they'd sort of jumped in price. Um, and I did a Twitter thread about it and uh, like demonstrating that the difference in that that makes to people who are living on the margins to their weekly household budget. And um, actually, one of the big four supermarkets has sort of reached out, been in touch and sort of gone, oh, actually, yeah, we've made an error here um, doing this and um, reintroduced their whole um, basic range to back how it was about two or three years ago. Um, I'm sort of wandering around my local supermarket today and just absolutely sort of overjoyed at all these products that I've been buying for years now back on the shelves. So one of the big four has taken action, um, but the the other supermarkets, um, not so much. So I'm kind of hoping that they follow as does lead and go, oh, we need to compete with them on prices and that it has a knock-on effect. But at the moment, for the majority of customers, um, the prices of food have gone through the roof. Yeah. And Kate, are particular items of food rising by more? Well, we've heard that certainly those core basket items like the pastas have certainly gone up. And we know that red meat, um, salted goods like crisps, etc., anything with carbon dioxide in the process, soft drinks particularly have gone up. But I think the fact is that we, we've got just a very challenging landscape. We know that people are having to make serious decisions about their income and, and how best to split it up between all the demands of the increase in fuel prices and food prices. That's that that keeps coming up about the choices of heating and eating. We've got more people using food banks than ever before, and that's not just return people visiting back again more frequently it's also people that have never had to visit before and we've also got a huge amount of food that is still consumable that goes to waste and we've got a big issue in our whole society where that continues to be the case when we've got people hungry so I think we need to push back quite rightly as Jack's doing I'm a huge advocate of our work in terms of pushing back and getting some reality checks with the supermarkets we need to educate and support people to make right choices with food and we also need our government to be working much harder and smarter to get short and medium steps so that we get out of this crisis because the music from the media this week is heavy reading we've got the boss of tesco saying look things are going to get worse and we've got the, the bank of england saying things are going to get worse jack what action could the government take what would you like to see them do oh god there's so many things that they have the power to do i mean we saw um in lockdown that there appears to be a magic money tree for you know, eat out to help out or for writing off furlough fraud or, you know, things that the government deem worthy of of investing millions and billions of pounds into. They seem to be able to magic it out of nowhere. But the less glamorous and far more important things like, you know, like increasing the minimum wage to an actual living wage rather than just naming it a living wage would lift millions of people out of poverty overnight. Uh, things like um, the delays that are built into the universal credit system. If somebody's waiting six weeks for their first payment for universal credit, that's two missed rent payments or two missed mortgage payments. And with that comes bank charges and penalty fines. And once you're in that spiral, I know because I've been in that spiral myself, it can take years to dig yourself out of it. So, you know, make sure people who are working are paid a fair wage. The majority of people who are using food banks in Britain today are in work. And so we've got to ask ourselves, what sort of government do we have that they, they consider that to be a perfectly acceptable way to run the economy? I, I wonder, Kate, just finally, what type of ma margins these big supermarkets are working under? In other words, could they afford to absorb 
the price rises themselves. Could they keep them lower? I think what I would say is that supermarkets have to sell a lot of goods to get the profits to the point that they need them at because they are relying on us going in and filling a basket or trolley to get the spend up. And sometimes they do sell at loss leaders. But we saw the magnificent effort of those retailers coming together last year, two years ago, sorry, at the beginning of the pandemic, saying we are going to feed the nation. This is about collaboration, working together, strengthening supply chains. And for me, the whole power of opportunity that the business side of things can do here is a strategic alliance and partnerships between supermarkets and major providers in getting this right. And that has to be having those basic ranges that would allow for a substantial, healthy, good eating offer on value products every day without any concern of going into a supermarket and fearing you're going to have to put something back on the shelf. Because having personally gone through that myself, it is the most embarrassing, awful situation that no one should find themselves in. We have to have affordable, good, healthy food because it's going to impact everything, Stephen. It's your health. It's your mental well-being. It's get up and go to get out and do that work. We could see those businesses come together and achieve so much if that passion was there to do it. I'm sure of it. Kate and Jack, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.